Dr. Liz, how are you? Shalom, Rav, how are you? Shavua Tov, how are you? All good, Baruch Hashem, all good. How's your family? Okay, okay. Can, can you just close the door for a sec? Good. I oh, know, okay. Um, one minute, one minute. Baruch Hashem, all good, all good. Rav, how are you keeping? Yom, yom. So I just have to, can I mention something very, very quick? Very quick. Please. So I got a message uh, from our Robertson, Robertson Rappaport, who's the granddaughter of Moshe Feinstein, her father's Rabbi Tender. And she shared with us something unbelievable from the New York Times. When it was yeah. on the January 2000, they issued a, um, in the newspaper, three pages, because it, it was the 100th anniversary from uh -huh. the 1st of January 1900, they had the front page from 2000, January, uh, from the January the 1st, 200, and they predicted yeah. it was going to be in January the 1st, um, 2100. And they had like, would robots be voting and things? And then at the bottom of the page, they had candle lighting towns in, uh, in New York, and people couldn't believe it. And they said, well, like, who paid for this? How come you put this in? And the editors, uh, Roman, I think he's an Irish Catholic, he said, one thing, we don't know what will be in the future, but one thing's for certain, Jewish women will be lighting candles, even in a hundred years' time. Was the last, it was the last thought in the, from the New York Times, you would believe, but it, it, it's incredible. Amazing. Baruch Hashem. Hmm. Amazing. Um, Dr. Les, I see that we have also very important guests that I didn't see for a long time, actually. You know who's with the founder of this uh, show is Mr. Edler, Mr. Stephen Edler. Wow, Mr. Oh, lovely, wonderful. Long time. Welcome, Hello. Stephen. Welcome. Yeah. We'll find you later. It's so nice to okay. see you. Mr. Edler, how are you? What? Why are you going white? Why am I going white? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting old. <laughs> you gave him grey hair, Stephen. You gave him grey hair. Have a look at mine. I've got more than he has. <laughs> uh, how's it, Stephen? Why, it's great to see you. you. Why are you missing you? All right. It's so nice to see you with us. Okay. You know, when I lived in South Africa, my hair was my hair was black and the people were white. I'm not <laughs> black hair. Guess what? All the people are black. Only uh, Stephen. Before you arrived, you arrived. Only Stephen. Only Stephen. Who else with us? Gabriel yeah. with us. Uh, Link. I don't know who's Link with us. Jones iPhone. Hello, Joan. Hello, Link. I don't know who's Link. Who's Link? Hello, Link. Who is Link? Hello. Okay. Link doesn't want to introduce himself. Louis with us. Kieran with us. Who else with us? Mark with us. Hello, Marky. How's it? How are you? Hey, Rob. Everyone, how are you all? You all well? Good. So well, we're going to start. I'm going to mute the everyone i'm going to mute everyone because we start the show and bezrat hashem na'asev natzliah v'hashem alenu berachama v'yarbiah the subject of the shiur today is the power of the shofar and rosh hashanah and bezrat hashem will try to understand what is the power of the shofar and rosh hashanah but first of all i would like to delegate the shaul la'ilu nishmat ester kadem bat ketia mordechai ben rahma harav avraham haim ben eliezer yaakov tamar bat zehava rahel bat malka sultana yaakov salomon ben farha nishmatam tie tsrura betsura haim please god betvor arut bat beila and now I would like to delegate the Shi'ur Lerfuat in the health of Leora Bat Miriam, Menashe Naji Ben Farha, Orna Bluma Bat Miriam, Israel Ben Zisa, Harav Avraham Haim Ben Marina, Harav Shlomo Yehuda Ben Dalia, Harav Moshe Ben Devora, 
מרדכי דוד בן לאה, משה בן יהודית, יוסף בן אסתר, חנה, שרה בת דבורה, דבורה בת אסתר, שלמה פנחס בן שינה פישה, חונה טוביה בן חיים שאול זליג ושושנה בת דבורה. Please God that the show is going to be in health of them. ושלאר כל חולי עמו בית ישראל במקום שהם. So we said that the subject of the show, the power of the shofar in Rosh Hashanah. As you all know, it's a mitzvah tase, it's a positive command from the Torah to listen to the sound of the shofar on Rosh Hashanah. And the source to it. First, we're going to go through the source. Then we go, why do we blowing the shofar? Today, we try to speak about, we try to speak also about confusing the Satan with the sound of the shofar. When is a person a judge? Is one of the most important thing without listening to the sound of the shofar on Rosh Hashanah that we have a positive command from the Torah and soon we'll explain is to crown Akadosh Baruch Hu. And then, if we have enough time, I would like also to bring some halachot and explain the halachot regarding the shofar, regarding a special mitzvah, halacha of one mitzvah. So, Be'ezrat Hashem, Nasev Natsliya. Okay. So we have two sources that the Torah tell us that we obligate to listen to the sound of the shofar on Rosh Hashanah. The first source come from Sefer Vaikra in Parashat Emor in chapter 29, verse 24, and there it says like this. <clears throat> it means on a seven months. When is the seven months? We counting the seven months, Rabota, as you know from the Torah, it's counting from Nisan. Okay? So Bahodesh Shvi'i, okay? Behad la Hodesh, that's referring to Hodesh. אלול, אוקיי? Okay. יהיה לכם שבתון זיכרון תורה מקדרי הקודש. That's the first source that we have, that the Torah tell us that it will be a day of שבתון, that means that you're not allowed to do any work. תרועה is blowing the shofar, מקרא קודש. אוקיי. Okay. The second source come from the book of במדבר. In Parashat Pinhas, in chapter 29, verse 1, the Torah tells us also like this. That means that the Torah tells us on the seven months, okay, on the first, on the first day of the seven months, okay, it will be a holy day to you. You're not allowed to do any work. It will be a day of Torah, a day of Torah, a day that you blow the shofar. And Hazal learned from these two verses that it's a positive command from the Torah to listen to the sound of the shofar on Rosh Hashanah. Okay. From here until now, we learn the source where are we obligated, from where we are obligated to listen to the sound of the shofar on Rosh Hashanah. And the second question that we have to ask ourselves, why do we really blow the shofar? There's many, many explanations. Today I'm going to bring only six different ideas, and I'm going to start, first of all, with the Psikta Rabbah. The Midrash on Psikta Rabbah, it's a Midrash that have a lot of drashot, Drashot is a lot of <coughs> Drashot is a lot of shiurim that been given on the festival and to haftarot of Shabbat. That's after Psikta Rabbah. And some people say that it's been written by Rabbi Tanhuma, by Rabbi Abba. That Rabbi Tanhuma he wrote the Psikta Rabbah, and there it says like this regarding the blowing the shofar. בשעה שישראל תוקעים בשופר, in a time that the Jewish people blow the shofar, in bracket it say תרועה, תרועה it mean the sound of תרועה, okay? מסתלק הדין ומקרב את הרחמים, what it happened? In a time that we blow the shofar in Rosh Hashanah, we actually pushing away the character trade of judgment of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and instead we 
bringing the character trade of mercy and compassion to the world on Rosh Hashanah. And we all know that on Yom Rosh Hashanah, Akadosh Baruch Hu sit in his chair of glory and he judged the entire world. On that day, Akadosh Baruch Hu judged the world, every human being. <clears throat> But because the Jewish people blow the shofar, as I'll explain, immediately, listen to that, immediately, the character trait of judgment that there is in the world disappear and come the character trait of mercy and compassion to the world. And as I'll say, where do you learn that? You learn that from the verse that that means that Akadosh Baruch Hu get uplifted with the sound of the Torah when we blow the shofar. Hazal in the Gemara given us another two places, another two reasons. In the Gemara in Masechet Rosh Hashanah, I'm going to bring the, both of the pages, first page 16, folio 1. There it says like this, Amar Akadosh Baruch Hu, the Almighty said, that means blow in the front of me in Rosh Hashanah in the horn of a ram so that will when we blow the shofar on Rosh Hashanah, it's the same that we have to take a horn of a ram. Why dafka the horn of a ram? That when we blow on the horn of a ram, it's the same like we sacrifice our soul to Akadosh Baruch Hu. That means that Akadosh Baruch Hu will remind by that that we blow in the horn of the ram, okay? He will remember the Akedah of its Avinu. It's Hakavinu, the son of Abraham Avinu, that when Abraham Avinu took him to Har Moriah to sacrifice him as an altar. So the main reason that we blow the shofar is to remember the Akeda of its Hakavinu. And by that, that we blowing the shofar, that immediately Akadosh Baruch Hu doing atonement to the Jewish people. How does he do the atonement? When he say, when he listened to the sound of the shofar, and that's remind them, give you hold the akeda. Hazali <clears throat> in the Gemara in Masechet Rosh Hashanah in page sixteen, but now folio two, not folio one. There they explain another reason. Why do we blow the shofar on Rosh Hashanah? And there it says something very interesting. Listen to that. Hazal said to confuse the Satan. And we'll speak about what is confusing the Satan. And we'll do a bit of understanding what it means confuse the Satan. But on the Pshat of the Parim, Hazal tell us that when the Jewish people blow the shofar, they're actually confusing the Satan. And as you all know, that when the Mashiach come, it's one of the 13 principles that the Rambam wrote, that the person obligated to believe that the Mashiach will come, Bebo Shal Mashiach. And when we blow the shofar, it sounds to the satan like we're blowing the big horn, that when the Mashiach come, it comes the shofar gadol. And it sounds to him that his time now is limited because Hazal tell us in a Gemara in Masechet Sukkah in page 52, folio one, listen to that. Hazal tell us, la'atid lavo, for the future to come. Hakadosh Baruch Hu mevi et yetzerara. That means Hakadosh Baruch Hu take the yetzerara veshohato and he slaughter him. That means that when the Mashiach come, Hakadosh Baruch Hu will take the yetzerara. That's the angel and the and the Zohar Hakadosh say and also Hazal and the Gemara say, who's that Satan? Who's that yetzerara? So there Hazal say, who yetzerara? Who Malach Hamavet? Who a Satan? that the Satan himself, the Satan, is the evil inclination, he is the Malach HaMavet, the angel of death, he is all of that. And when the Mashiach come, Akadosh Baruch Hu 
gonna slaughter them. That's according to the Gemara in Masechet Sukkah 52, Folio 1. So when we blow the shofar, Hazal tells us in the Gemara in Masechet Rosh Hashanah, page 16, Folio 2, that when he hears the sound of the shofar in Rosh Hashanah, it sounds to him like his day is limited because the Mashiach here, and he gets confused. And therefore, he cannot criticize, okay, against the Jewish people. He's so afraid what's going to happen with him that he suddenly become imbecile. He can't criticize against us. That's the third idea. The fourth idea that brought by Rabbi Sa'ad Yagaon, Rabbi Sa'ad Yagaon was during the time of the Geonim. He born 1,139 years ago in a city of Pium in Egypt. And he said that the main reason that we're blowing the shofar is to remind us the destruction of Bet HaMikdash. It's to remind us that the same when the enemies was ready to attack Jerusalem, they blow on a trumpet, they blow in a shofarot, they blow in a shofar, that they're ready to attack the city of Jerusalem. So therefore we blowing the shofar to remind the Kadosh Baruch Hu that Bet HaMikdash is still not being built and to have mercy and compassion to remind them and to remind us to work on our deeds that we can change our deeds. And if we change our deeds, we're gonna build better Mikdash. And Rabbi Sa'ad Yagaron actually bring the source from the prophet Yirmiya. The, years, the prophet Yirmiya in chapter four, verse 19 say like this, Ki kol shofar shamati, the sound of the shofar I heard, nafshi tuad milhama. That mean I heard the sound of the shofar and I know that now it's a war. That means to tell us that, say Rabbi Saad Yagaon, that the main reason that we blow Shofar in Rosh Hashanah is to remind us that still Bet HaMikdash is not been built and we have to work our deeds that Akadosh Baruch Hu, please God, if he see that we correct our deeds, he'll build Bet HaMikdash and then he'll send Mashiach Tzidkev. The Rambam, the great eagle, Rabbi Moshe ben Maimon. Rabbi Moshe ben Maimon born in the city of Cordova. He born in Spain 886 years ago. And he explained that the main reason, that one of the main reason that in Rosh Hashanah, listen to that, that we blow the shofar only after we read the Torah and we leave the Torah still on the Heichar. That means still on the ark. That means wherever we read the Torah, usually what's happened on a day that we read the Torah, immediately after we finish to read, we say Ashre and Baletzion, and then we take the Sefer Torah and we put it back in the ark. We return it to its place. Why? To honor the Sefer Torah, because it's not honor to leave the Sefer Torah outside. There's no covered for it. Said the Rambam in Rosh Hashanah, and that's all everyone, all different minhagim, all different what whoever is, leave the Sora, the Sefer Torah on Echa until after the Tkiot. And why? He said that the main reason that we leave the Sefer Torah on Echa, that we want to have a lot of merit. And here that we show that during the time of the Tkiot, the Sefer Torah is with us. That means that in the merit of the Sefer Torah that there, that will protect us, okay, from the judgment and will give us a good reason that, not us, he will give a Kadosh Baruch Hu good reason to judge us favorably. Why? To show a Kadosh Baruch Hu, look, the Sefer Torah is outside and we're using it. Another reason that brought by the Rambam, and he bring that when Akadosh Baruch Hu, actually the Midrash say that wanted to give the Torah, first he gone to all the rest of the nation all over the world. And he asked every nation and every nation found excuse not to accept the Torah. This one said that, this one said that, it say you should not steal. This one said, no, we can't without stealing. The other one say that it's in the Torah that you should not murder. 
No, we cannot without murdering and etc. But when you come to Bnei Israel, what is the Jewish people saying? The Jewish people say immediately, Naaseh Nishma. First we'll do, and then we'll listen. And the main reason that we leave the Sefer Torah on top of the Echal, that to show that HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you see HaKadosh Baruch Hu, we're reading the Torah that you've given us. Not only that we're reading it, we all trying to fulfill the mitzvot that we obligated, that you written for us in a, in a holy book. That's me. That in a merit, like we're hinting to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, look, we're trying to fulfill all what you tell us. And we're trying to do as much more mitzvot. Okay? Why? To show HaKadosh Baruch Hu that in a merit of the Sefer Torah, that we're studying, that we're reading, that we're learning, okay? We're blowing the shofar. And only after the tkiot, you all know, we return the Sefer Torah back to the Echa. Only after that we, come, we finish the tkiot, only then in the end, we take the Sefer Torah and we put it back in the Hechal and we lock it in the Ark. Okay, so we see from here, that Hazal explained that the power of blowing of the shofar, we learn from here, it's number one, Hazal explained to us in the Gemara, that is the main idea behind it is to confuse the satan. The sound of the shofar, when HaKadosh Baruch Hu listened to it, he get a lot of nachas from it. And when he get a lot of nachas from it, that means that HaKadosh Baruch Hu judges favorably. Another idea that we explain that the main reason that we leave the Sefer Torah is to show that Akadosh, to show to Akadosh Baruch Hu that we're still learning in his holy Torah, we're still reading his holy Torah, we try in our best to fulfill all the mitzvot that's written in the holy Torah. And all of that, that it will be in favors of the Jewish people that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will judge us and a character trait of mercy and compassion. Earlier we say that one of the idea <clears throat> that Hazal tell us that we are blowing the shofar is Hazal in a Gemara in Masechet Rosh Hashanah, remember page 16, folio two, 16, folio two, is to confuse the Satan. We have to understand what does it mean to confuse the Satan? What does it mean to confuse the Satan? And many of Hazal ask there in a Gemara in Masechet Rosh Hashanah, there is a kushia. Kushia is a question. We don't understand Hazal said. What is really the Satan so imbecile? Really, is he so imbecile? Is he so stupid? Every year, on the same time, we blow the shofar. How come that he gets so confused? So Hazal answer, and according to the Pshat of the Dvarim, that Hazal say, you know why the Satan is get so confused? Very simple, because he doesn't have a memory. The Satan doesn't have a memory. He doesn't remember what happened last year. That means his memory is very short. So you're all going to ask, so then if his memory is so short, how is he criticizing man? Get that. So as I'll explain, immediately as a person make a vera, immediately after that, he go up to heaven to criticize against the person that done a vera, so that he cannot forget. To forget, he doesn't have a memory to remember what happened last year, so he forget about it. That's on a shot of the dvarim, that for us just to understand why is the Satan get confused when we blow the shofar in Rosh Hashanah? But I saw a beautiful commentary that brought in the name of Arav Ovadia Yosef, Zecher Tzadik Bekadosh Livracha. The famous Arav Ovadia Yosef, he born in the city of Baghdad in Iraq, he born 101 years ago. And he explained what our sages tell us in the Gemara in Masechet Rosh Hashanah, in page 16, folio two, that when we blow the shofar, we actually confusing the Satan. And he said like this, 
It say it's a remedy. When the Jewish people hear the sound of the shofar, it's a remedy that they saw that the sound of the shofar, the shofar waking up the soul. What does it mean waking up the soul? That means that people remembering, becoming a word, Rosh Hashanah, becoming a word, the important day, that that's the judgment day, and we have to do, and we have to work on our deeds, we have to correct our deeds, we have to do ma'asim tovim, we have to do learn more Torah, and etc. So Hazal say that that's how we get confused. Come Rav Ovadia and Yosef will say, he said, you know how we get confused? He's not getting confused only from the sound of the shofar. He'd get confused when the Jewish people during the months of Elul, until Yud Bet Yishrei, get this kind of energy that all year around they don't get. They get this kind of energy that they can fight the evil inclination more than any, any other day during the year. That mean that the months from the months of Elul to Yud Bet Yishrei, that that's Yom Kippur, the Jewish people, when they hear the sound of the shofar every morning in Elul, they get this special energy that when it's come Rosh Hashanah, suddenly Satan, the Satan see the Jewish people full of energy to do good deeds, to do mitzvot, to help one each other, to make peace with one each other, no more faribo. He cannot understand. And that's what causes him to get confused and he start to get scared. Why is he start to get scared? Because if the Jewish people live in peace and harmony with each other and they do mitzvot, immediately HaKadosh Baruch Hu will send the Mashiach. And that's what he gets confused. That's how Rav Ovadia Yosef, Zecher Tzadik, Vekadosh Libracha explain why the Satan get confused from the sound of the shofar. Another thing that's very important to us, Rabota, in Yom Rosh Hashanah, to help us to find an Akadosh Baruch Hu, to help us to find ourselves and he'll see us and he judges favorably, it's to crown a Kadosh Baruch Hu on us. And I saw a beautiful commentary that brought again by Rabbi Saadia Gaon. Rabbi Saadia Gaon, as we explained, it was from the Geonim. And he explained like that. In a time that we blow the shofar in Rosh Hashanah, we actually crowning a Kadosh Baruch Hu on us. That means, that one of the most important thing is when a person listens to the sound of the shofar on Yom Rosh Hashanah, it's also to, in his heart, in his mind, to say, I'm crowning the Almighty on me. And what did he explain? He explained like this. He explained, Lehavdi, Lehavdi, when today, or in the olden days also, that when people want to crown a king, of some country. What did they do? They blow the trumpet, they blow the shofarot in the olden days, okay? To say that this is gonna be the king of the country. Come Rabbi Saadia go on and say that when we blow the shofar, we actually saying to Akadosh Baruch Hu, the Almighty, we crowning you as our king. And when do we do it, Rabotai? We do it in Aleph Betishrei. Why Dafka Aleph Betishrei? We have to understand that also. So explain Rabbi Saadia Gaon like this. Bekaf Hei, okay? Bekaf Hei Be'ilul, HaKadosh Baruch Hu start to create the world. When did he finish the creation? When he finished to create the world? He finished to create the world in Aleph Betishrei. And that's when he finished to create the entire world. So dafka be'alef b'tishrei, that that's the day of the judgment. What do we do? We blow the shofar. By the sound of the shofar, we're telling HaKadosh Baruch Hu and we're telling all the world. Now we're crowning the Almighty. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Melech Malchei HaMelachim, the king of all the king. So that means the sound of the shofar, <coughs> the sound of the shofar that we're blowing, that's what we actually saying to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, we crowning you. But the Chochmah behind it is that each one 
individually, in his soul, in his heart, in his mind, to think, I'm crowning Akadosh Baruch Hu on me and on all the entire world. There is only one king, and that's Melech Malchei Amelachim, the king of all the king. Who is it? Akadosh Baruch Hu. And that's one of the most important thing that we have to do with the sound of the shofar that we crowning a kadosh baruch Hu on us. Sorry, <clears throat> I needed to wait my throat. Now, as you all know, we say that the, the day of Rosh Hashanah, it's a day of judgment. Why Dafka Rosh Hashanah? Because we know that Akadosh Baruch Hu created Adam Rishon on the sixth day of the creation. On the sixth day of the creation, what happened? <coughs> Adam Rishon make the head, Achal Me'etz Adat. He eat from the tree of knowledge. Adam Rishon sent by eating from the tree of knowledge. On the same day, Akadosh Baruch Hu jad, done the judgment. And he found them all guilty because Adam Arishon had them dive into Akadosh Baruch Hu and ask him not to punish him. And he pledged to Akadosh Baruch Hu. We say it in the tefillah. Adam Arishon, the same like Adam Arishon, Adam, that you find them unguilty on the first day. Okay? That's what we're doing. That on the first day that he been created, when I say the first day, I'm referring to the first day that Adam Arishon been created, Emson, and that was Aleph Tishrei. And since then, that's become a day that Akadosh Baruch Hu judged the world, and also he's sitting on a chair of glory. That means that if people coming to Akadosh Baruch Hu, and davening to Akadosh Baruch Hu, Akadosh Baruch Hu actually have mercy and compassion when he hear the sound of the shofar, because that helping for two things. Number one, as we mentioned, that we remind them the Akeda of its Hakavino, and number two, we crowning him. That means we saying Akadosh Baruch Hu, you the king of the entire universe. Okay. That's, we know that it's a day of judgment. But the question is that many people ask, when are we get judged on Rosh Hashanah? So we all know the Gemara in Masechet Rosh Hashanah in page 16, folio two. I'm gonna read it in Hebrew and then I will translate it to English. And the Gemara say like this, Hazal say in the Gemara. Shlosha sfarim niftahim berosh Hashanah. Three different book I get open in Rosh Hashanah. Ehad shel rasha'in gmurim. That means the first book, lo alenu, is completely wicked. People that completely wicked. Ehad shel tzadikin gmurim. That means the next book is completely righteous. And the third book, ve'ehad shel benonim. And the one that they're not rasha'in, but they're not righteous they're not wicked but they're not righteous that means they do other but they also do mitzvot the gemara continues and say tzadikim gmurim people that are completely righteous okay what's happened akadosh baruch hu nechtavim venechtamim lealtar akadosh baruch hu immediately write them and seal them lehaim for life reshaim gmurim People that are completely wicked, Hazal say in the Gemara, Nichtavim v'nechtamim le'altar le'mita. Akadosh Baruch Hu right, because these people is wicked, this year he will, he sign and he seal them for this. He say, but what happened with those that they are benonim? Benonim is the middle. That means that they do mitzvot, but also the evil inclination work on it. And they also sometimes do avirot, so the judgment is fluctuated. Sometimes up, the mitzvot, sometimes it's down, and etc. Hazal say, Kluim ve'omdim. They are in a judgment. Mirosh Hashanah ve'ad Yom HaKippurim. That means that the Kadosh Baruch Hu given us another extra 10 days, that that's Aseret Yemei Tshuva, the day between Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur, 
And if we do good deeds and we learn Torah and we correct our deeds, nikhtavu lehaim. If we do mitzvot, Akadosh Baruch Hu will merit us for haim. And has the shalom, if not, lo alem. Derashash, Rabbi Shalom Sharabi. Rabbi Shalom Sharabi born in the city of Sharab in Yemen. And he was, he born 301 years ago. And he was the greatest Mekubalim in Yeshivat Bet El. Yeshivat Bet El is in Yerushalayim. The Gaon Hida after that was there. Many of the big Kabbalistic rabbi was there. It's until today, Shivat Kubalim. It's no, it's well known, Shivat Kubalim, but El in Jerusalem. And he said, you know when the Jewish people get judged, as you all know, we get judged during the day at night, HaKadosh Baruch doesn't judge us. When does he judge us? He said like this, Adam Nidon Betkeot HaShofar. Wow. The person get judged, the Jewish people get judged while we blowing the shofar. Look at the mercy and the compassion that HaKadosh Baruch Hu have on us. He judges Dafka when? When the sound of the shofar in sound. Why? That he will remember number one, the Akedah of its Hakavim. Number two, he will see that by that, that we blowing the shofar, we actually telling HaKadosh Baruch Hu what? That we crowning him. That's me. That on the first state it because we blow, there's a different how many it According to the Sfaradim, we blow 101. According to the Ashkenaz, they blow 100. There's different opinion how many, but that's not for now. We'll explain maybe in the next Shaurim what's the difference between how many it But, Say the Rashash, on the first tetit ki'ot, the first tetit ki'ot that we have, three zero, that's when a person get judged. So we see from here, we see from here something extraordinary. That HaKadosh Baruch Hu, although that he's sitting on a chair of glory, and that day it's Yom Adin, the day of judgment, and the character trade of judgment is in full power, HaKadosh Baruch Hu still have compassion and mercy on the Jewish people, that he telling them, blow the shofar. The sound of the shofar will remind me Akedat Yitzhak, the Akedah of Yitzhak. And we brought other idea why Dafka and the sound of the shofar, why Dafka the shofar, that's when HaKadosh Baruch Hu have mercy and compassion on us. Ari HaKadosh, Rabbi Yitzhak Luria Ashkenazi, he born in Jerusalem 487 years ago. And he wrote in his in the Sefer Etzahim, Etzahim is a Sefer Kabbalah, Beshara Kavanot. He explained that if a person feel during the davening on Rosh Hashanah that suddenly he have that his soul wanted to cry, he must know that now his soul get judged in heaven. That means if a person feel in Rosh Hashanah, suddenly he feel like he feel uncrying. He must understand that he saw the judge in heaven. Hazal in Ezor Kadosh in Sefer Vaikra, the Parashat Vaikra, the first chapter, in Dafyut Head, that means page 18, there Hazal tells us that the judgment we're learning from the Zohar that while the sound of the shofar, the first stated Kiot, like say the Rashat, that was a great Kabbalistic, he explained that that's when we get judged. So if people will have to understand and want to know what to do, when you hear the sound of the shofar, the first kiot, on the first day, on the second day. The first day, rasha'in gmurim v'tzadikin gmurim, we explain. The second day, judge the middle people. But it doesn't make a difference, Rabotai. When we sound the first titi, sound of the, the sound of the shofar, if a person focus on that time, and he said that hatati aviti pashati, number one, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu forgive for all my sin. Number two, you have in mind, you have in mind that he crowning that HaKadosh Baruch Hu to the sound of the shofar, HaKadosh Baruch Hu actually changes character trade from judgment 
to mercy and compassion. Say if we have time, and we still have time, I'm going to bring a very interesting halakha, and we're going to link it together to what we're talking about, the sound of the shofar. The Or Zarua. Who was the Or Zarua? Or Zarua was Rabbi Itzhak ben Moshe. Rabbi Tzhak ben Moshe, born in the city of Vienna in Austria. He born in the 13th century. And in his time when he was sitting, uh, he was the rabbi, he'd been asked that this question. Rit Mila in his shul or no shana? And the question was, should we do the Brit first or should we blow the shofar and then we do the Brit Mila? Said the old Zarua, he bring two different idea and he said like this. The old Zarua said that first of all, in Rosh Hashanah, if there is a Brit Mila, what do we do? We do the Brit Mila first. That means that if the baby is healthy, obviously, we do the Brit Mila on Rosh Hashanah and it's come before the tkirot. And he explained like this. And he said that, who was the first human being on the world to have circumcision? Avraham Avinu. Avraham Avinu was an imola rishon barolam. He was the first person to have Brit Mila. And the only reason that we blow the shofar is to remind us what? Akedat Itzhak. Itzhak was his son. That's mean that the main reason that we blow a horn of a ram is to remind us that the Akedah of Ishak, but who come from Avraham Avinu was Ishak Avinu. That means that Avraham Avinu was before. Therefore, what do we do? We blow the, do the circumcision and then we blow the shofar. The same like Abraham Avinu born before Ishak, he done the Brit Mila, that's what we do. And here you can learn also the Alachat Tadir Sheno Tadir, Tadir Kodem. That means whatever we do quite often, okay, that's what we continue to do. It's come before something that we do once in a while. Okay. Bring the Ozawa another beautiful answer. And he said like this, listen to that. He said, we all know that during the time of the blowing of the shofar, there's a judgment. The Jewish people get judged. But we as a Jewish people want to add up more mitzvot. Why? That if we do more mitzvot, we'll do good deeds. Akadosh Baruch will judge us favorably. And many people think that mitzvah brit milah, it's one mitzvah. Not at all. Brit, mitzvah brit milah, that we have few mitzvot. Number one, to cut the foreskin. That's the Brit. That means that we cut the foreskin that there is on a Brit. After that, we have to tear the membrane. Priya, it's called Priya. That's the second mitzvah. The third mitzvah that we have, it's Metzitza. It's to suck the blood, to take the blood off. Okay? From the Brit Kodesh. After that, what do we do with uh, Orla? We actually bury it in the sand. We put it in the sand. The mohil, the mohil himself, you give him the Orla, he put it in a box of sand and he bury it. So we see that we do plenty mitzvot before that. Said the Or Zarua, you know why? Why we do the Brit Milah before the blowing of the shofar? It's to add up as much more mitzvot that we can do on Rosh Hashanah, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will judge us favorably. And then we blow the shofar. And then we say to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, remember the Akedat Itzhak. And then we crowning him. And on those merits, say the Or Zarua, a person can have more mitzvot, can be judged more favorably. And that's why we do the Brit Milah before blowing the shofar on Rosh Hashanah. So Be'ezrat Hashem, that we should all merit to do ma'asim tovim, to do mitzvot, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu will write us and will seal us. And a book of life and a good book of 
uh, for good of health and us and all the Jewish people all over the world and then we'll send Mashiach Tzitkenu and build Bet Amigdash speedily in our day. Amen. Ken Yeratzon. If anyone have any question, please unmute yourself. If you want to ask question, I will try to answer if I can. Any question? Rabotai. Bechavu. Hello, it's Anthony. How are you? Shalom Aleichem, Anthony Fairman. How are you? How's everyone? Rod, how are you? Baruch Hashem. How's everyone at the lodge, Mr. Fairman? All right, keeping well, not bad. Baruch My Hashem. mother's also keeping well. My mother's also keeping well. Baruch Hashem, send our regards, please. Why do we blow the shofar after Yom Kippur? Why do we blow the shofar after Yom Kippur? Very good. When we get to Yom Kippur, I'll answer you, but I'll answer you now because it's not Yom Kippur. Now we're talking about Rosh Hashanah, Anthony. But the main reason <laughs> is that the sound of the shofar after Rosh Hashanah is like Akadosh Baruch Hu in Sha'at Na'ila. We explained in the last week's show, I don't know if you remember, that from Elul, from the beginning of Elul, the Almighty coming every day more and more closer to us. That means the Almighty in a field. HaKadosh Baruch Hu Nimtza Basadeh, as I'll say. What it means, Nimtza Basadeh? Nimtza Basadeh. As I'll tell us that during the months of Elul, until Yud Bet Yishrei, that that's Yom Kippur, Kadosh Baruch Hu, everyone can come close to him. HaKadosh Baruch Hu waiting for us. That means on Yom Kippur, Bishat Ne'ila, in a time of Ne'ila, it's the highest level. That means that Akadosh Baruch Hu is with us in a shul, such a level that is very close to us. Okay? That means that everyone can correct his deeds. By that, that we blowing the shofar, we actually saying that Akadosh Baruch Hu now soon gonna leave. And when he left us, we said that we're crowning him. You understand what I'm saying? Hello? Anthony? Yes, yes, I understand. Okay. That's on the shot of the Dvarim. Well, we'll get to it. You'll see that it's more depth. But we'll speak about it, Be'ezrat Hashem, when we get to the law of Yom Kippur, Aseret Yemet During that time, we'll speak about why do we blow the shofar on Yom Kippur and the end of Yom Kippur. You follow? Okay. Any other question, Rabotai? Rob, we'd like to, uh, I think on behalf of everybody, I'd like to thank you for such an interesting shiur and we appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. Thank Thank you very much. Thank you, Louis. Thank you, everyone. Once again, welcome to our friend Stephen Edler. Thank you for joining us. It was great to see you with us, Mr. Edler. I hope that you'll join us more often to the show ring because you was one of the foundation members, Mr. Edler. We're missing you. And uh, if you can, Stephen, I would like to ask you personally, I don't have um, Norman Emden's, um, I forgot the name. I don't have Norman Emden's um, WhatsApp number. So if you can WhatsApp it to me, I would like to invite him also to the showroom because Monty also joined us last week. So- Why do you think I'm here tonight? Sorry? Why do you think I'm here tonight? Because Monty told me it was a good year. Good, 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 good. I know, I know, I know that was Monty behind it. Monty sent me a message earlier that he cannot make it. But it's always good to see you with us. So if you can send me Norman Emden, because I know that you all together in, uh, in Ranana, if you can WhatsApp it to me and then I'll ask him to join us. Rabotai, I would like to wish all of you Shavua Tov. I hope that you enjoy the show. Be'ezrat Hashem will meet again on Thursday night. We'll do the Shi'ur on Parashat HaShavua and on the Haftarah. We started a new idea. We also explained the Haftarah, what we never done before. 
In the meantime, to wish you Shavua and keep well, keep safe, look after yourself. Have a great night. Thanks to all of you for joining us tonight. All the best. Thank you very much, Ro. Thank you, Ro. Thank you, Ro. Family. Thank you. I see your son here, but uh, not enough. Is, is he behaving? <laughs> no, he's just a funny you know, what do you want? You know, Stephen, he said to me, Israel is so busy. He doesn't have time to himself. He's so busy that he, he never has time to remain. He said, it's not like South Africa. In Israel, it's all the time busy. You know, he's working like <laughs> shit. Anyway, I'm sure that you'll see more of him, please God, during the hugging by Zarat Hashem. Yeah, he was with Jonathan uh, a few weeks ago, two, three weeks ago. He yeah, he told me. Good time. Yeah. He had a good time with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He enjoyed so much. He told me. It was very nice. Okay. Yeah. Be well. Have Thank a good you. Keep well. All the best. Good night. Thanks,